Hi everyone, hope that summer's going well for you. Um, here's our second video. Sorry, it's not a cartoon. There's a pretty good amount of ground to cover here though. Um, so I'm gonna try to basically fly through a slideshow rather than uh, attempt to make a really long cartoon. A uh, couple bits of housekeeping beforehand. Make sure you're at least trying to keep pace on the book. Um, and also please remember, we are doing unit one over the summer, so you can push these videos goes off but you will eventually have to watch them uh, day one will be a discussion of the book day two will be just kind of an overview of unit one and then on day three that Wednesday we will be taking our unit one test and hopefully getting the launch into unit two at the end of that so just something to keep in mind anyhow today's lesson is on the Neolithic Revolution and farming so let's go ahead and dive in all right, so right from the get-go, we're looking at a new time period. Um, I promise we're not going to be doing that every single time. Uh, just there's so much ground to cover in these first few. Um, we are looking at today the Neolithic time period, which uh, runs from roughly 8,000 BCE to 5,000 BCE. Again, this is not American history. Dates are nowhere near as specific or important, especially in early world history. You just need to know that the Neolithic came after the Paleolithic. And if you know what Neolithic means, which is New Stone Age, that really shouldn't come as a surprise to you. Um, the most important event of the Neolithic era uh, is the one that we're, of course, going to spend most of our time talking about, the development of agriculture. There are a few other important things, uh, the domestication of animals, founding uh, settled societies and the development of the basic social and political structures that we'll see for the rest of our class but we'll talk more about those later here's some creepy creepy statues from an archaeological site in jordan i hope you enjoy them okay so there are three hugely important events in the history of humanity in terms of transforming our species how we live as a whole um, there's the neolithic revolution the Columbian Exchange and the Industrial Revolution. Those other two are going to come a lot later. This one is must know, so go ahead and make sure you have it down. The, the Neolithic Revolution is just the development of farming slash agriculture. It's often called the Agricultural Revolution. And it started officially somewhere around 11,000 BCE, we think. Again, a lot of these dates are guesswork. Um, the process is incredibly slow. It takes place in multiple places. So there was less one big Neolithic revolution and more a lot of smaller ones between 11,000 BCE and 3000 BCE. Uh, if those dates get you confused or bothered, just know that BCE just stands for before the common era it's exactly the same as BC uh, so don't get too twisted up uh, in those dates um, you can see on the map here the possible zones of agricultural origins and then the spread outward we'll take a closer look at those in a much larger map here in a couple of slides the part of the Neolithic Revolution that sometimes gets left out, though, is uh, the domestication of animals. By 9000 BCE, humanity had actually domesticated goats, pigs, and sheep uh, in various areas. Again, we'll see a map in a second. Uh, and domestication is an interesting alternative uh, to just growing crops. Um, you can actually see down here, the third bullet is the one you need to know. Domestication doesn't necessarily mean settling down. Yes, settled societies do use domesticated animals. We see that throughout the world. However, non-settled people uh, who continue roaming around, they're called pastoralists, they're going to have a big impact on world history from time to time, really till the end of our fourth unit. Uh, we'll be talking about pastoralists from here to here, there. Um, if you're wondering, by the way, where are dogs on this list? Dogs actually were domesticated before uh, humanity developed agriculture and settled down. Um, if you're a cat person and wondering where cats are, they're not going to be domesticated for a while because cats are hateful little animals. But regardless, domestication is a big deal because it gives people various things. It gives them more protein, 
It gives them fur to keep warm, and it is also going to be used to create milk, which is pretty easy to uh, get from an animal, and cheese, which of course does require some development. Now let's take a look at where this domestication happened. Okay, so here's our domestication and agriculture map. Uh, I'm not going to dwell on it very long because I want the video, again, to be a manageable length. So if you want a longer look at this, just give it a pause. All I really want you to focus in on here is how much stuff originated in an area where it had a bigger impact somewhere else. Like most of the sugar, I'll just use this example real quick. Most of the sugar in the world is grown today in the Caribbean and in Brazil but please notice it originated in New Guinea. And you can find examples of that throughout this map, but feel free to pause and look for those because we're going to go ahead and move on. You may recall from our last lesson that uh, one of the themes of AP World is uh, humans modifying their environment. And one example of that is actually found in our food. Uh, it's not just modifying the land, sometimes it's modifying the crops, which we've also been doing from the get-go. Check it out. Over here on the right, we have an example of a little grass-like plant called teosinte. The pods are hard, the pods are very difficult to digest, but what happened was Mesoamerican farmers in what's now the Valley of Mexico slowly but surely bred the best of those plants and led it to create corn, the modern corn that you and I know and love today. And over here on the right, we have another example of a modified crop from a different part of the world. This right here is, of all things, a wild banana. Please notice that to get to the delicious part, you actually would have to pick out a lot of really hard, inedible, indigestible seeds, unlike modern bananas, which are just super easy to eat and really good for you. Mm. Mm. Give me a shot. Good banana. Anyway, um, so what you should do here is create kind of a T-chart in your notes because we're going to look at on this slide and the next the advantages and disadvantages of agriculture. So over on the advantages side, you would want to list that there's more people, there's more food, uh, it enables people to settle down, which enables specialization of labor, and people can now have other jobs. This is actually what's going to enable the development of craftsmen and priests. And basically, if you're not a farmer and you like what you do, you still should thank a farmer. Now let's jump to the other side of our T-chart and talk about the disadvantages of agriculture. For one thing, farming is quite difficult. And because farming is quite difficult, uh, you're going to see people working longer, they're going to be working harder, and they're oftentimes going to draw the conclusion of, hey, if I had somebody else to do this for me, my life would be better. So yeah, farming is largely responsible for the development of slavery. Uh, having more people and having a settled place means you have something you have to protect, which means farming is probably directly responsible for the development of warfare. Um, it's really responsible for the division of society. Farming is seen as easier and less noble than talking to the gods or something like that, uh, and so farmers wind up at the bottom of basically every early society. Uh, you also see increased rates of disease as more people are crowded into a smaller area, and lives are shorter and less healthy for farmers. And that, by the way, just applies to the overall uh, groups of people. There's actually special negatives for um, certain subsets of individuals that we'll take a closer look at as time goes by. So after the Neolithic Revolution, after humans decide to settle and farm, uh, they begin to live near their sources of food. And that settling creates this massive wave of changes, most notably in technology. A surplus of food meant that you had to store it, uh, and so basket weaving and pottery, things that really weren't necessary for the hunter-gatherer lifestyle, though they are seen in some hunter-gatherer groups, those things had to be developed. Uh, pottery, for example. Pottery was invented thousands of years before writing was because you don't necessarily need to write stuff down, you do need a place to store your food. Uh, tools are also developed to increase yields, to intensify uh, how much the crop of a crop can be produced. Tools like the hoe and the plow, get your giggles out now, are developed, first using easy to find and soft copper, but uh, eventually being replaced with bronze. However, 
The development of these new tools was quickly used to hurt other people. Uh, metal tools were rapidly adapted into various forms of weaponry, uh, which of course increased the size of various individual uh, cities or nations or chiefdoms. We'll talk about that stuff later. Uh, it enabled them to increase the size of their holding, but at the expense of other human beings. Uh, and as society grows, tool makers and weapon makers, blacksmiths, they become critical figures in society. You had to have them if you wanted a successful civilization. One last key thing before I let you go. Farming greatly altered humans' relationship with their environment. Human beings had engaged in changes to the environment, but they were usually unintentional, like uh, hunting the animals of the Americas, the big tasty ones at least, to extinction. That wasn't intentional. Now we begin to see intentional changes to the environment. The building of irrigation ditches, the watering of crops, uh, using uh, those new tools to cut down trees and harvest the wood therein for uh, building materials and for fuel. And we also begin to see uh, clay used to create brickwork. We have a lovely depiction here of a Mesopotamian city, uh, and you can see pretty much everything's made of clay, minus a few of the uh, palm fronds around the edge of the uh, canal and the moat that you would probably have only uh, seen used in the homes of the elites. Most of the average folks would have been living in clay. Uh, and that's where we'll leave off today. We've looked at the development of farming and the consequences thereof. Uh, next time, we're going to take a look at the characteristics of civilization, and we will then spend the rest of our unit looking at the major cradles of civilization. Once again, thank you so much for watching. Hope you're having a great summer. If you have any questions, please, please, please feel free to contact me. Okay, bye.